Hey everyone, welcome back. And I think it's time for me to do an update reading on Stephen Miller. So the reason why I'm calling it an update reading is because um, I've done a reading on him a while ago, really long time ago. And it really kind of showed that this guy really likes his position. He really likes who he is and he's very comfortable with how he does things. Whether or not people around him like what he's doing, he seems to be a person that um, that really relishes in his in his own persona and what he has created. Um, he is... You know, he's got the dream job that he's always wanted, and I think that um, he's happy. So I think what we need to do is we know that he's kind of the architect of, you know, the the whole border security thing. He's part, he was the architect of the Muslim ban. He's the architect of a lot of things. So it's his, the way he thinks is not the way that I would think the majority of people thinks, but it just really does feel like that this guy is very happy with what he does and who he is and how he does it and portrays it. So, um, I'm going to do a reading on him because it was requested. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably smudge this to clear the energy here. I have a lot of protection stones here because his is an energy that I don't enjoy going into him and Trump both are people like him who just takes delight in the harm because they think that it, it just feels like that they think that, you know, the, the policies they put in place are for the good of the people. Even if it hurts people, that's just necessary pain in order to get to the agendas that they're trying to reach. So I'm hoping. So that's why I need to clear the space and I need to clear all of this. So, okay. We'll just let that burn out on its own. And put it over here. Okay, we'll just let that burn out on its own. So here we go. Let us find out. What I want to do is I want to find out um, where he's going, what his energy is, what, you know, what the outcome is. It's just I'm going to look strictly at him, not just the specific individual policies. Let's just see where he is in his energy and where it's heading and what it's going on. Okay. Let's look at Stephen Miller and let's just going to do a basic cross on him. Stephen Miller, where are you now? Where you're heading? Where are you going? How is your outlook going to affect you in the end? Because how he believes, how some of us other people believe, are not the same thing. All right. All right. I can see the smoke going into the cards. Let's clear the cards. That's a curious little thing. All right, let's see where we are. Stephen Miller where you sit, how are you going, where are you heading? All right. I really don't know what to expect because with people who think differently than like I think because I think for the service of others, how I can help others, how I can help make people put them in a better position that they they than they currently are versus a person who is service to the self, who is doing things for selfish pur purposes, regardless of how it affects other people. These are differences that are very hard to reconcile sometimes. So this is, let's see where it all takes me. I'm going to try to move into where he is feeling and what he's coming from and how he's going forth. Okay. So, so this is the central of him. He's in an argumentative stage. He is 
this guy finds, um, he, I think this guy really cherishes and revels in the argument. It's like, you know, even if he, he, he's kind of one of those people that if you say one thing, he's going to argue it in another way, just to create an argument for the sake of an argument. So this guy really kind of, I think he kind of enjoys the argument. It's kind of a sport and fun for him regardless and, and, and creating the disharmony, because if you're creating disharmony, you can, you can create control by separating people, right? You put them into tribe mentality and that separates them. And that gives you power because now you can gather people on your side in order to attack the other side. So there's that, there's this relishing in the argument. Okay. What crosses him is nostalgia. Hmm. This seems to come up a lot with people who who, who, who are very service to self. And, and, and this is, I think this something goes back into his past. Okay. This goes into his past. It could have been something in his childhood that created this. Okay. Um, I've heard it said that, you know, his family is just bewildered by what, how he's turned out. You know, he's like, he shouldn't understand his family has come from a place of, you know, a persecution and stuff. So why is he creating persecution? Something in his past has caused it. I mean, maybe he was bullied in his past. These are things that are causing this. So his nostalgia for something that occurred to him in the past has facilitated this. So it has created his personality. It is, it is, it is made part, is part of who, of it making who he is. Okay. Making him who he is. So he really relishes and cherishes in that. Okay. So we got the past. So there has been some changes in his life. So something in his past has changed him. Okay. Something that it was beyond his control. I mean, we did discuss there's some bullying, something going on, something, you know, in his past that created who he is today. All right. Um, there was a death of, a death of something, something. I'm not saying, I don't know if it could have been a physical death that is, has, has changed his ideology, or it could have been just an, the death of, of the ideology of his family that created this new thing. It could have been, you know, him, something occurred that was major, something that was beyond his control and it shifted and altered his, the way he views things. Something major occurred in his past that shifted and, and changed the views of what he is, of how he is today. So what lies beneath him? Okay. The King of Wands. So I think what lies beneath him is, um, this idea there is two things. There is um, a male that is influencing him in two areas. And this male is giving him an optimistic outlook into his own understanding. Okay. So it could be he's been influenced by somebody that he views positively. And that has, um, that has given him the the, the ability to be steadfast in where he is today and how he's feeling. So the King of Wands underneath him. So there's either an influence underneath him. There's a male that's influenced him in order to, um, that helps that, that created the persona that he is today. Okay. So what lies ahead of him, he's going to be in a state of suspension. So something is going to happen that is going to put him into a state of suspension, a state of things. So whatever he has been placing in motion is going to be placed, he's going to be put on hold, is going to be stalled. He's going to be stalled in um, what he's doing. So he's going to be placed into a state of suspension in the near future. So what does that mean for him? Will it allow him to see things from a new perspective as the hangman suggests? Well, that really depends on how he on how he views things. Because like I said, 
something major happened. Something in his childhood has created to him to relish this whole argument thing. But this whole argument thing is going to put him, it's going to force him into a state of suspension. There is a person who has influenced him and, and, and influenced him in order to be who he is today and to how he perceives things today. He sees this person as a very, um, is, is very optimistic and very influential and, and he likes what he hears from this person. So he sees this particular person as a king of opportunity, you know, it, 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 who is very influential. So what is on his, above his head? So he feels like he is the knight. He feels like he is the knight charging, putting things in motion, making things happen. He feels like he is that knight, that energy. He's putting all this creative stuff into motion and flooring. He's the fire element. He is actually quite fiery. Have you ever listened to him on, <laughs> listen to him on the news? He gets very militant and he slams his fists and he speaks real loud and he overrides anybody else. He doesn't listen. He just goes out and does. Okay. There's no listening card here. He relishes. So we have, he's, he's got a fire line right here. So this is where he is. He's got a fire line. So whoever has influenced him, he likes that style. He likes the argumentative style. And he is that knight forcing it forward and going forward. In the past, something has happened to him that has changed his outlook, changed the way he's done. And this, this, this really emphasizes that something happened in his past. But all of this fire energy is going to end up with a hangman. Okay? He's going to end up with a hangman. He's going to be put on hold. It's going to all come to, he's going to be put in suspension. So something is going to happen that's possibly going to, it's going to put a, put a stall to some of his policies that he is trying to force forward. Okay. How he sees himself right now, he sees himself pretty battle weary. This is interesting for a guy who, you know, for a guy who firmly believes in his position he is feeling like he's taking a beating, okay? Or maybe he feels like the administration is taking a beating. Maybe it's unfair. He feels it's very unfair that the administration in himself is taking a beating because he's just doing what's right in his mind. Whether it's right or wrong, it's in his mind. Whatever he feels is right. But he's going to keep holding his ground and trying to get to that next fit completion level. He's like, it's almost like the, I can feel the victory. It's there. I can taste it. I'm going to keep fighting forward, right? So he's feeling very battle weary. He sees himself as that, okay? What's the environment like for him right now? The queen of pentacles. So it's the security. He's in an environment that he feels very, very secure. So as anybody could look at it, there's money. So this would be for him, the White House environment is a very secure environment for him. It could be in complete chaos. It don't matter. For him, it's very secure because, you know, he's got a, he's got a president who has faith in him. Okay. So he feels very secure where he is. His environment allows him to create all of this. Okay. His environment allows him to do that. So he feels very secure in that environment. So he's in his own, and we know that the White House is kind of like a bubble. You know, people go in and, it, and it's, and it's their own, it's the space that they create. And the White House, particularly for him, whether or not legally, I mean, we can later do a reading on Trump, but he feels secure. He likes the White House environment. He likes it. It it works well for him because he he thrives on the arguments. So whatever is going on in the White House, he's feeling pretty good and confident about. Okay. So that is interesting. So he really feels it. He feels pretty good about it. All right. Now, hopes and fears. All right. So his hopes, his the harvest is rich, but the work is unsatisfied. So he has been working quite hard at his policies. Cause like we said, we, he's, he's an architect of quite a few of the separation policies, the Muslim ban, the, the, the se child separation policies. He is part of that. He is definitely feeling like 
hey, you know, the harvest is rich. I, you know, have, have I done enough? Is it, is it enough? Is, is everything that I was planning on putting in motion? Has it been placed in motion? Has I done enough? Obviously the fear on this is that you haven't done enough. So when you have a person whose thought patterns are very much, you know, with the service to self, with the, with the service of, with these ideas that may seem warped to other people, like I think that his ideas are quite warped, but to him, these are sound ideas and these are sound things for him. And these are things that he thinks are for the good. And whether or not they're very unpopular, it doesn't matter to him. It's just a matter of doing it because he thinks it's right. It's his, he's got that power, right? So this is, this guy definitely is pretty happy and confident in his place. So where's the outcome? Right, the king of pentacles. So he expects to be richly rewarded for all that he's doing, the king of pentacles. So the, so the, um, the queen is his nurturing environment. He, he likes the environment he's in. The king is him expecting to be richly rewarded, or he is being richly rewarded. He is getting money from all of this, and he is um, becoming part of this. So whatever is happening in the White House, he's being rewarded for his behavior. He's being rewarded for all of it, okay? So where does it go from here? But he's got a, an end, okay. So... He may be richly rewarded right now, but whatever is happening for him is going to be coming to an end. It will be coming to a conclusion, okay? So he has, he's being richly rewarded, he's being paid, paid pretty well, but it's going to come to an end. So there's going to be come to an end and he may feel it's successful but it's going to come to an end because now this will match the hanged man. Okay. So whatever is going to happen is going to come to an end. So these two cards will match each other. He's being ritually rewarded. He's coming to an end of this phase of his life. Okay. Oh, Hmm. I have a feeling this is the standing your ground, the battle. So his policies are going to be put come they're, they're, he's going to be put into suspension. I think a lot of his policies are going to be come to suspension. His situ, his cycle will come to an end and by that point he will be standing his ground. He will be defending his position. Makes me wonder is if the end that we're seeing here is after the presidency or if it's after the policies are are forced sh to be shut down. It's a little hard to say but he's going to be standing his ground. So is he going to co is he going to be is he going to come to trial to all of that? Well, it looks like that he's going to have to be defending himself in some sort of ways. I mean, there's no more cards in this particular spread, but it just shows that the cycle when it ends for him, he's going to have to be defending why he did all of this. But like I said, he really feels that this is cool for him. This is cool for him. Whether you agree with his positioning or not, he himself feels that it's he's doing the right thing. But he's going to be forced into he's going to be forced into completion. He's going to be forced into hangman. His policies that is going to be done is going to be suspended at some point in the future. And it's going to cause an end here. But he's being ritually rewarded. But then after the end happens, he's going to be having to defend his ground. This guy, we'll have to do another reading on him to see what this end means and where is it taking him. Um, I did ask, I go, where is he currently now and where is he heading forward? And I did say that I need to go from his perspective. This is his perspective. He's happy about it. He's doing things that he feels is right. And He's had some major issues in his past. He's got an influence. He's got somebody who he admires. He is that knight. He loves the fire energy. He loves the battle. He does feel battle weary. This is probably why it's going to come bring in the hanged man. And it's probably why it's going to bring in the ending because it's not, 
it's inevitable in it. It's inevitable in his, his energy, but he's going to wonder, is it enough? Was it enough? Was it enough to make the changes that are necessary? Was it enough? Or, you know, but he's going to be, he's going to be definitely standing his ground. He's going to have to defend his position and he's going to defend it. Is he going to find remorse for all the harm he's done? It doesn't say, none of that says, this is just his perspective. Just looking at it from his perspective. So, yeah, this guy has got a different way of thinking <laughs> than someone like me. I mean, I don't see what he's doing as a great thing, but he definitely feels like he's doing the right thing for himself. So, And he's being rewarded for it. So, But it's going to come to an end, and he's going to be defending his position, just like anybody else who feels like that this is just like anybody else. Anybody else who who does harm to other people are eventually going to have to defend why they did it. You know, the, you know, the Michael Cohen's or the Paul Manafort or the Michael Flynn's that he's in that same group and he's going to have to defend himself at some point. But right now he's protected in the white house and he, he is, and that's his nurtured ground. It allows him to create all this energy and put it in motion. So, but he will be put in suspension. All right. I hope you enjoyed this reading and seeing it from a different perspective, from his perspective. And um, we will talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.